Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Back to my Christmas card series. And then I'll jump to Valentine's and then I'll jump to other things. <laughs> I am determined. I've never been able to do this any other year. I usually am just done with Christmas when it's over, but this year's been a little bit uh, different to say the least. And I have a stack of all these random products. Some were sent to me, a bunch I purchased, etc and a bunch of ideas. So I'm going to continue making Christmas cards. We'll see how long it lasts, but it also feels good to be slowly adding to my stash for next year. So I started with some black cardstock. I have it in my Misty. I removed the foam insert from my Misty because I'm using a cling rubber stamp. And the stamp is the gift boxes stamp, background stamp from Simon's the Stamp. That little white tool I'm using is just a whiteboard eraser. It just helps to get a bit more even pressure. I've shown this in a lot of videos lately. Um, any whiteboard eraser will work. I know there's some awesome crafters on Etsy that are making uh, different little fun tools that will work as well. If you want to support those, you can look those up. Anything like that. Um, I've also used just the sleeve, you know, uh, pulled it over my the palm of my hand and use that just to get a good glide. Um, but I find the tool takes a little bit extra pressure off, if that makes sense. So that's what that's all about. So with the black cardstock, I'd use my anti-static powder tool and then I brushed off the excess. I stamped the image with clear embossing ink, coated it with detail white embossing powder and then melted it with my heat tool. And I did do this a couple times because um, I'm, as always, you know, I've got the supplies out. Why not make more than one card at a time? So I'm just using regular black cardstock. I'm not using watercolor paper. There is black watercolor paper on the market. I do have some, but I find when I'm doing things specific like this, and I've shown this in a lot of videos, I just, I don't see any need for the watercolor paper. I'm not adding a ton of water. And I'm not layering or doing anything like that. So the cardstock is fine. Um, the only times you need watercolor paper is when you're using a lot of water, you're layering, you're really working things back and forth. That's what watercolor paper, paper is good for. Because otherwise regular cardstock would just start to tear and pill and disintegrate. But for this, very simple. I'm just using my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors palette. My favorite. Um, this metallic gold one. I originally was going to use the jewel palette. I was actually going to do this one in, you know, my typical black, gold, white. And the second card front, I was going to do the jewel palette. But you guys, if you've been watching me for any length of time, yeah, now I like my gold in black and white. So that's what I did. I had added water to the palette before I started filming this part. It just helps to um, soak in to these watercolors. They're funny. Anytime you work with like metallics, um, glitter, watercolors, anything like that, you need to work them up more. You can't just like touch a wet brush to it and get a bunch of color. You need to swirl water into the, um, the palette and to like work it up, work up that metallic, work up that pigment. So that's what I did. And I just randomly painted all the ribbons and bows on this background with these gold watercolor papers and I messed up right here right now that one spot I wasn't supposed to paint that <laughs> I was supposed to paint the spot right next to it did not realize till this was done and I still I always went with it it's like in the end it's not that obvious so whatever um but also what I wanted to mention is I really love this background stamp I have so many ideas I was like "Ooh, this would be fun for birthdays this could be fun for new babies anniversaries wedding whatever you know it's a stack of gifts make it whatever you want so I went with Christmas because I need to make more Christmas cards this also I was like "Ooh, man if I knew somebody that was like say getting married on New Year's Eve that sort of a thing this would be like just change out the sentiment this would be the perfect card so ideas I'm just you know saying them out there for you guys just to give you ideas so all I did though was paint all those ribbons little bits here and there with those metallic watercolors and then of course I'm gonna add splatter because how can I not <laughs> and because the last card I made the like the last video I did was the valentine one and I didn't do splatter on that one so you guys know usually it's like if I do one without the next one just has to have splatter 
So I only used two of the colors. I used one of the golds and then the, the whitey, silvery sort of color, whatever it's called, in the palette. Um, splattered that as well. I didn't go super heavy with the splatter, but I added it. It needed to be there. So I just used my little splat box and then swirled up that color with the same paintbrush. This whole time I was just using one of my little, you know, cheapo Nouveau paintbrushes. Um, that I really like to use, especially with like the metallics and for splatter, things like that, because the pack of brushes is cheap. And I've had mine for, I'm not sure how many years now, and they're holding up great. I'm quite impressed. So anywho, let them all dry. And then I used one of Simon's basic rectangle wafer dies to die cut those panels. So they'll be slightly smaller than the card fronts. And then for my main sentiment, I'm using this Seasons Greetings wafer die set. This set is an oldie, but goodie. I think this came out well over five years ago, if not six, six or seven years ago. Still available, still one of my favorites. So I die cut black cardstock with the wafer dies and I am stacking two layers of the black cardstock together, just adding little dabs of my craft hacky glue. And then I die cut some gold glitter cardstock with the wafer dies and that will be my top layer on these. So that just gives it the dimension. And I, I like I like the dimension with um, word wafer dies to have, you know, two, three. Generally my, my go-to is like three layers. Just, I can't not. So I adhered them together. And then I, I included this in the video. I fiddled and actually adhered the dots for the eye and the little apostrophe. Honestly, you could leave it if you don't wanna fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit of a finicky because they're so small, but you could use like a little crystal for the dot on the eye, or you could just leave them and you probably wouldn't notice it at all because with the, you know, the metallics and the glitter and the splatter and all the things, it's not necessary. Or another option is rather than stack those little finicky bits, you could just adhere after adhering the words, just adhere the like the gold glitter parts and not bother with stacking them. So there's always options, but me, I don't mind the little finicky bits. Um, it's, and also because I'm just particular, I needed to, I just, I had to do it. So after I'd stacked my sentiments, when it comes to little tiny things like this, I use either my um, Tim Holtz craft picked or this yellow one is my little honeybee like dye release tool. It's called, it has a fun little kind of spatula end and then the, the pokey end. I use the pokey end to kind of hold down the piece while I add a bit of glue. And then I just use my little embellishment wand to pick up the other piece, stack them together, use my fingers, align it. Again, it's a finicky little thing. I don't mind it, honestly. But yeah, if you don't want to do it, just use a little, use a little gemstone. <laughs> use a little gemstone or use a little gold pen, you know, mark it in. It, yeah, it's not the end of the world, but I just kind of like everything to be consistent. So I stacked the three little layers and just kind of fiddled and got them and they're good to go. My biggest, my biggest issue with stuff like that is losing them. Like I end up, you know, knocking it onto the floor and you never find it again. It just, they just disappear. So I did end up losing one of the little dots to the eyes and had to redo it because I was just determined, you know, stubbornness wins. So once those are done, I just adhered these to the card front. Because of the way my lighting is, it kind of definitely looks on camera like the sentiments are just kind of fading into the card front. But I, I took a picture with my phone right before I started this voiceover um, in what I will call real light, you know, not my, you know, white light for photos and all that sort of thing, just to give a real idea of how these look and how the glitter of the sentiments actually stands out. So just again, just cause. So after I had adhered all of that, I still had the stamp in my Misty. My card bases are just standard A2 top folding cards. And I'm using some masking tape to tape off right where the little, like fold of the card will be so that I don't get any ink on what will be the like top inside, I guess you can call it, of the card. Plus the masking tape is also going to hold this little piece of cardstock in place because I didn't want to butt it right up against the edge because I want to make sure the whole inside of the card gets stamped with this stamp. And then I'm using my, of course, another favorite, my Delicata Golden Glitz ink pad 
to ink up this gift boxes stamp. And then I'm gonna stamp that onto the inside of the card. And again, using my little whiteboard eraser just to make sure I get a really even impression. I decided on the insides I wanted this to stamp basically perfectly within reason. Nothing ever needs to be perfect, but I wanted this to stamp as evenly as possible because I decided I didn't want to add any sentiments or anything. When this ink is fully dry, um, I can write over it with a ballpoint pen, like no problem. When I was filling out a bunch of my Christmas cards this year, I noticed on the ones I'd stamped with this Delicata Golden Glitz, just, yeah, my, I have those, are they Ink Joy? Whatever they're called. I have them sitting here. Um, yeah, the Paper Mate Ink Joy. So those little gel type pens, um, they wrote over this dried ink, no problem. Like it didn't stick, if that makes sense. So anywho, I stamped that on the inside of the cards and then nothing else. I'm not going to add any sentiments, anything. I just really liked how the gold gifts looked on the white cardstock. And again, it was like, ooh, you could do that. And then you could fill in either the gift boxes or the ribbons with color and like create more cards and ideas. Anywho, I did that, let that ink dry. And then for the card fronts, rather than using foam tape, I just die cut another piece of black cardstock with that same rectangle wafer die and then adhered it to the back of my card fronts just to give it that tiny little bit of dimension. It's another step you can technically skip or you can use foam tape, whatever floats your boat. But I just did that little bit to give it just that little extra something. And then I'll adhere this to my card base. And as the broken record that I am, <laughs> you could always stop here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to add some bling. So I kept the bling simple for these cards. I didn't use, you know, five different types of bling. I just used some gold crystals. These ones were from Trinity Stamps, the gold eclipse crystals. And just added a few, not a ton, just to, you know, pull it out. And again, my lighting just kind of makes them look rather dull and boring. They're really pretty in real life, just pretty gold crystals. So I sprinkled those on both of the card fronts and adhered them. Again, normally this is where I'm done and you know, I show you guys like the end of the video, but after I added this, I was like, I still felt, I was like, there's something missing. It just needs one more thing. And all I did was I pulled out um, some of my reverse Christmas sentiment strips by CZ Design. And I just trimmed down the ones I wanted. So just a little, there's a little line there that had ho happy holidays printed on there twice. So I trimmed those down with my paper trimmer. And then I'm just going to adhere those along the bottom of the sentiment there with some black 3D foam squares. So I just kind of trimmed down the foam square so I could fit it right over the, like the bottom of the G on the greetings so that the cards will say seasons, greetings, happy holidays. So did a little bit of fiddling, cut a couple of the foam squares in half and then just popped those little sentiment strips into place. And then once those were in place, then these cards are done. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll show my little uh, kind of back and forth on the camera here and then the first photo I'll show after this is the one I just took with my phone I've said this before I'm not the greatest at photography like at all and heck half the time I'm not even in frame on video so that just is but that's what it looks like in real life so you kind of see how the sentiments stand out more with the white light it just fades but I hope you guys got the idea and as always I will list everything in the description box below the video, link to my blog, all that fun stuff. So you can check that out below if you're interested and stay tuned. I'll be back very soon with another video. Bye.